the head of the World Health Organization has condemned in the strongest possible terms two French scientists who suggested Africa be used as a testing ground for a vaccine against the novel coronavirus. A comment last week from uh, some uh, couple of scientists uh, who said the testing ground for the new vaccines will be Africa. Uh, to be honest, I was so appalled and it was um, a time when I said when we needed solidarity, this kind of racist remarks actually would not help. It goes against the solidarity. Africa cannot and will not be a testing ground for any vaccine. We will follow all the rules to test any vaccine or therapeutics all over the world using exactly the same rule. Whether it's in Europe, Africa or wherever, we will use the same protocol and if there is a need to be tested elsewhere to treat human beings the same way, equally. And the hangover from a colonial mentality has to stop. And WHO will not allow this to happen. And it was a disgrace, actually, and appalling to hear during the 21st century from scientists that kind of remark. The comments were made in an interview that aired last week on the French television channel LCI, triggering a deluge of outrage on social media, including from several leading soccer players of African descent. Ou chez les prostituées, on essaye des choses parce qu'on sait qu'elles font, elles sont hautement exposées et elles se protègent pas. Est-ce que, qu'est-ce que vous en pensez? Alors vous avez raison. Although they have both issued an apology, the idea of having Africa as a setting for a coronavirus vaccine is highly controversial. Among the six populated continents. Africa has had the smallest number of COVID-19 cases from the virus which originated in China. New York is really in trouble. Governor of New York has now mandated all non-essential workers to stay at home. New Yorkers who violate social distancing rules are going to be fined up to 500 bucks. Several members from the African community have been lost to COVID-19 in the United States. It was a consoling message from the Consul General of Nigeria in New York to Nigerians, particularly those living in the New York area. As the entire world battles the coronavirus, I pray God's protection and sound health for the Nigerian community in the United States of America, particularly those in the New York area. Our prayers are with you. It is important you remain calm in such a time like this and be prayerful and supportive to one another. As we continue to observe the measures put in place by the local authority in the United States of America. Okoye has also reached out personally to families of victims and health workers on the front line. As the global spread of COVID-19 accelerates, we continue our focus on efforts by African governments to help flatten the curve across the continent. The government of Uganda has begun relief food distribution to citizens affected by the lockdown in efforts to contain the COVID-19 outbreak in the country. The Ugandan State Minister for Relief and Disaster Preparedness explains the process. These categories include, one, the orphans, who are living in orphanages. The orphans who are living in orphanages. Two, the sick who are admitted in hospitals right now, in all the hospitals in the country. And three, those individuals and groups that live in what sometimes you call slums, but are known as informal settlements. In Sierra Leone, President Julius Madabu has thanked citizens for complying with a three-day nationwide lockdown. 
The order went into effect on Sunday following the sixth recorded coronavirus case in the country within a five-day span. I just go around the town, Freetown, I go as far as Lompa, for see how Una they comply. I feel proud of my country once more because as you say, we really do comply. From here, Freetown, till go reach Lompa, the town like say, nobody not in Africa. At the tell we have plenty thank you for this kind of level of compliance. We get small, small problem then. I see small picking the whole rubber than the cross for go get water. They are see say some people then come on walk, especially the policeman them and the nurse them, they not get motor car and then the worker. They want the owner small small problem who will take care of. But I want for use this occasion for say congratulations really. We don't show say we are a law-abiding people and that together we will work for make sure say, this particular virus come on here, like how we've been driven the Ebola virus. I want to tell you now plenty thank you and I want to make you continue for washing our hand, stay away from people as much as you can because I know say plenty compound and crowded but anything where we observe, anybody where is sick, now for call 117 quickly. Made them care them and then they go and observe them for make sure say if not that sickness we will know how to take care of her. April 7th marked the 26th anniversary of the 1994 genocide in Rwanda and the beginning of the commemoration week. Over 1 million Rwandans were brutally killed in 100 days during the genocide. The event provides the opportunity to remember victims of the genocide, preserve its evidence, and educate about its history and reflect on Rwanda's transformational journey over the last quarter of the century. Still staying with Rwanda, senior government officials and heads of parastatals will forfeit their salaries for the month of April to contribute to social protection of vulnerable citizens who were affected by the measures put in place to control the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. Ethiopian Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed has met with leaders of opposition political parties in the country. The impact of the coronavirus disease on Ethiopia and additional measures that his government will take were key agenda items in the meeting. Leaders who were not present at this session in the interest of social distancing will meet with the Prime Minister on Monday, April 13th. In his fifth address to the nation following the coronavirus outbreak, Ghana's President Nana Akofo Ajo announced that the government will provide free water supply to citizens for the next three months. The Ghana Water Company Limited and the Electricity Company of Ghana have been directed to ensure the stable supply of water and electricity during this period. In addition, there will be no disconnection of supply. Furthermore, government will absorb the water bills for all Ghanaians for the next three months, i.e. April, May and June. All water tankers, publicly and privately owned, are also going to be mobilized to ensure the supply of water to all vulnerable communities. In Egypt, the Great Pyramid of Giza is still temporarily closed for this infection. The pyramid is a defining symbol of Egypt and the last of the ancient seven wonders of the world. The Ministry of Tourism and Antiquities has launched a series of virtual and guided video tours of museums and archaeological sites around the country. The tours are available on the Ministry's official website and social media platforms. The Ministry of Interior in Tunisia has deployed police robots to patrol the streets of the nation's capital and enforce the lockdown imposed as the country battles the spread of the coronavirus. Known simply as PCAR, the remotely operated Robocop was first produced in 2015 essentially to carry out security patrols and operates autonomously through artificial intelligence. Okay. 
Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.